Hi y'all. Today I'm going to show you how to make adorable tiny pots out of polymer clay. I started by creating a sketch of the three pots I had in mind to demonstrate the three basic sculpting techniques for hand building with clay. Pinch, coil, and slab. While of course it's always fine to play around with the material and discover as you go, I find it much easier to organize my thoughts and visualize a sculpted product if I do a sketch in watercolor of my idea first. I used a mechanical pencil and eraser to sketch my design onto paper with a medium blue-gray tone, then used watercolors to roughly paint in the colors I plan to use. With watercolor, I usually begin with the lightest shades first, moving from yellow to orange and continuing through the spectrum to the darker shades of purple, indigo, and blue. In honor of Pride Month and my own queer identity, these pots feature rainbows. Time to make my pinch pot. Polymer clay needs to be conditioned before use. The easiest way to do this is if you squeeze, knead, and rub it with your fingers and hands until it is soft and pliable. After making a ball, I used a round tool to push down into the clay, then used my fingers to push up around the edges slowly on all sides. You could also use a pen top, pencil eraser, or your finger for this step. When I felt good about the shape of my pot, I used a sharp pokey tool to make drainage holes in the bottom. You could use a toothpick or large quilting needle for this. It's best to go slowly, then rock the tool around in a circular motion to gradually widen it. Be careful not to poke yourself. I'm really happy with this pot and ready to add some color. Since rainbows are the theme, I went with Roy G. Biv here. That's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. I made tiny balls of each color, trying to keep them all the same size. Then I placed them in order around the pot. It's easy to get mixed up here, so just keep checking your order. Roy G. Biv. When I got all my balls in place, I realized there was still open space, so I mixed up a light yellow green to fill in. One really cool thing about polymer clay is that you can mix the colors by kneading them together. I only added a little bit of green to a lot of yellow to make light green. With all my colorful little orbs in place, I rotated my pot around while applying gentle downward and sideward pressure. I then used a round tool to make light circular indentations all around the pot. Since I have 16 colors on top, I made eight indentations around the pot, one for each color. Red, orange, yellow, light green, green, blue, indigo, and violet. We'll call it Roy LGG Biv for this little pot. <laughs> Time to make the saucer. I started with plain white and put it up next to my pot to measure out a little square big enough to flatten out into a good saucer base. I rolled the clay in my hands to condition it, then pushed the ball down to flatten it. Since the saucer rim was purple in my painting, I chose a nice violet red for the edge. I rolled it into a strip, then snaked it around the edge of my white disc. When it felt secure, I patted down the sides, middle, and bottom to make sure everything was adhering properly. All right, looks good. Next is coil sculpting. Coiling is an ancient method of creating pottery. It has been used to shape clay into vessels for many thousands of years. I started this pot by creating a rainbow array of colors in little balls of equal size. I then used my small rolling pin to try to flatten out my spheres, but honestly, I wasn't too happy with the results and would recommend you simply roll the balls with your hands as I do in the following scenes. When you have a line of colors like this, you really don't want to overwork the material. Unfortunately, I think I bit off a little more than I could chew here and ended up with a very, very long coil that proved difficult to maneuver in the long run and even accidentally fell down on itself. Oops! Thankfully, I was able to recover from this error and carefully coiled the clay around itself to create a base. When I got to the orange section, I coaxed the coil up onto the top edge of the base to begin to create the walls then continued coiling up and around. I really wanted my walls to be taller, so I created another line of rainbow balls, rolled them out into a strip, then coiled them up around the top of my pot to create higher walls. This smaller coil was much easier to work with. I then pinched down the edges a little bit before using my flat edge to gently flatten the base and top edge of my tiny pot. Finally, I used my sharp pokey tool to create one large hole in the bottom. Time to make the saucer. It's pretty much the exact same process as I used on the coil pot, but this time I made a wider base and much shorter walls. Start with your colors in order, then roll them out as evenly as possible, then coil them up into the shape you desire. 
Polymer clay is generally pretty good at sticking to itself, so all you really have to do is press the edges together, and when it's fired, it should all stick. I love the way the rainbow stripes turned out on these little cuties. Now for the slab pot. To make a slab, I started by kneading my polymer clay to condition it with my body heat for use. Once I had a good ball, I rolled it just enough to get a nice thick cylinder. Then I pressed down on the edges a bit to even the cylinder out. Once I had a nice even cylinder, I applied heavy downward pressure with a flat edge to flatten it out. I then went back and forth over the piece many times with a roller to flatten and expand the piece evenly in all directions, and used my flat edge metal tool to push back up against the edges to create a rectangle of even thickness on all sides. My plan was to put three rainbows with little clouds on this piece, so I made three tiny balls of each of my Roy G. Biv rainbow colors. I then carefully finger rolled each piece out into a tiny strip and carefully connected the pieces color by color. At this point, they reminded me of bacon. This process was extremely delicate and the polymer clay got a little sticky. Next time, I'll definitely try using cornstarch to help the material release from my hands more easily. Now I'm seeing tiny hot dogs with relish. Anyone else? Once the final colors were in place, I gently stretched and curved each rainbow around into a horseshoe shape on the tip of my fingers, then used a tool to get the rainbow in place on the slab trying to remove any excess material. I had to add a little bit of violet to the rainbow on the right there to finish it off. With all three little rainbows in place, I was ready to make clouds. I formed six balls of white clay, then pressed each one in between my fingers before using my nails to make little indentations and curved cloud edges. I placed each cloud into place on one end of a rainbow as they were completed. I think this slab is really starting to look cute. Before I formed the slab into a pot, I wanted to flatten out the images on the front. So I flipped my slab over and rolled it with my rolling pin. I flipped the slab over to reveal my flattened design and it looked good. So I curved the slab into a cylindrical shape, but it wasn't quite as long on the edges as I wanted it to be for joining. So I worked the edges out a little more by hand. Then I rolled across the top with my rolling pin to smooth the shape out evenly. When I was satisfied with the shape, size, and smoothness of my slab, I once again removed it from my wax paper and began to form it into a cylinder. I also used my rolling pin to smooth the interior edges of the pot from within. For the base, I used a sage green color reminiscent of grass. I took a side-by-side -side measurement to guess how much polymer clay I would need, then conditioned the clay by kneading it in my hands into a ball and pressing the ball into a disc. I wanted a thinner piece for the bottom of my pot, so I rolled it out wider than the pot, then placed my slab cylinder on top of the base to make a measurement with my pokey tool. I drew a light circle around the pot, perforated the circle all around with punches, then used a plastic knife tool to cut away the excess material. This left me with the perfect size, shape, and thickness of clay for my pot's base. After that, it was a simple matter of smoothing the edges and pressing the base to my cylinder to create a pot. Now it's time to punch some drainage holes. Once again, I had to be pretty careful with these holes so as to not tear the material, but I was really happy with this little pot. Finally, it's time to make a slab saucer. This process is actually really similar to the first pinch pot saucer we did. You start with a chunk, roll it into a ball, then press it into a disc. I used my rolling pin and flat edge again to press out and firm up my saucer base. For the walls of the saucer, I chose a slightly salmony red. I measured approximately how much material I would need, then rolled the material into a long, even coil. I then used my rolling pin to flatten down the coil into a thick ribbon, utilizing my straight edge to shore up the sides. When I had a long enough strip, I gently pulled it off the wax paper and wrapped it around my saucer base. The end was a little too long, so I cut off the excess and it fit perfectly. These are so cute! I can't wait to see them all done. When all your pots and saucers are ready, Line a baking sheet with parchment paper and place your sculptures on top. Preheat the oven to 275 degrees Fahrenheit and set a timer for 15 minutes. When your timer goes off, remove your pots from the oven and allow to cool down for several minutes before trying to handle them. They will be hot and very fragile at this stage. Once the pots have cooled, it's time to pull them off the baking sheet and get ready to plant. Because these pots are so tiny, the only thing that really makes sense to plant in them are slow-growing species like cacti and succulents that can stay in such tiny pots for an extended period of time. It just so happened that I had a slew of baby succulents I have sprouted from fallen leaves of other plants. 
Succulents need very little space for their roots and are fine being compacted closely with other succulents in small spaces. I found it helpful to use tools to arrange the plants where I wanted them and push down on the topsoil to get everything firmly in place in each planter. I also decorated with some found stones and geodes around the base of the plants for added interest. Once everything was planted, it's time to water. I tried to go really light and easy with the water here, letting it drain out before refilling again. Then I placed the plants outside in sunlight to help them thrive. I truly hope this tutorial has inspired you. Polymer clay is a wonderfully versatile and accessible material for anyone who wants to get into clay sculpting but doesn't have access to studio equipment like throwing wheels and clay kilns. Your only limit is your imagination. Happy Pride, y'all.